Okay, engine fire on number one engine. So, now remember, you've got to maintain the altitude and take care of the airplane, but yeah, you have an engine fire. The pilots learn in this high-tech classroom. The instructors are veteran pilots who claim their younger counterparts have a bigger advantage today. Once he goes through the, the emergency procedures in the simulator, then uh, when he has an emergency in the aircraft, it's, uh, it's almost uh, uh, second nature to him. The ice is off. There is an unlimited number of gauges, buttons, and alarms. Each simulator is worth $10 million. The outside of the simulator looks like a box on stilts, standing about 20 feet off the ground, simulating the exact movement of a jetliner. Even the sound effects are there. On the inside, the simulators, like the real thing, are equipped for redundancy. That means if any major mechanical or electronic system fails, there is one, and sometimes two backups. We're a thousand feet above. The bottom line in this situation is that I could hardly get the jet off the ground. And once I did, if it were the real thing, we would have crashed. A situation a real pilot would have found routine, as they rarely panic, like I did. A flap problem, a hydraulic problem, an engine fire, we're trained to handle those situations, but some problem that came up that's, uh, that we, we really didn't anticipate would, would frighten one, but I don't think many people would be petrified as a pastor may think about but rather, if this situation develops, let's correct the situation and not, and not hurt a lot of people. Joan Connolly, TV2 News. place where the aircraft is literally torn apart and put back together to ensure air safety. Where you were looking there, they lay right in here. Crossway. Every bolt is inspected and all the safety checks are done constantly. Perhaps one of the most thorough safety checks is called the sea check. It's done about once every 15 months. The inside and outside of the aircraft are checked thoroughly for even the smallest flaw. The safety checks are also a convenient time to remodel the jets. The wallpaper is changed and the seats are reupholstered with flame retardant material. The life of a jet is practically unlimited if proper care is taken. Our inspection program is so laid out as to try to take human error out of it. Uh, for instance, if, if I was going to inspect this wing, I have a, a, a card, an inspection card to cover this wing. It has every item listed on this wing that I need to inspect. When possible hazards are found, they're brought here to be fixed. It's a constant job maintaining the brakes as they're corrected at the slightest hint of wear. The same goes for the wheels and tires. It's also not uncommon for an entire engine to be removed and repaired. About 55 a month are fixed at the facility. Inspectors are usually uh, a very conscientious person because, uh, you know, they, they would be very foolish not to be because you've got people's lives at stake. The research labs have their share of responsibility too. Their work on the radar and computers and also the newer systems such as wind shear detection continues daily. Wind shear. Wind shear. And finally, it's the collision avoidance systems that are receiving more attention than ever. Right now, there's only one being tested in the U.S. It's installed in the Piedmont 767 aircraft, one of the biggest parts of air safety now, avoiding mid-air collisions. The techniques on this is uh, that they're using presently is a trans what we refer to as a transponder technique, and it uh, transmits and listens, and it uh, uses the transponder on the other aircraft, triggers the signal from it, and between the two aircraft determines the distance, and it and uses that technique in avoiding collisions. 